Greetings and felicitations. Hip hip hoorah, tally ho. Hey baby doll. Hey Puddin. We had an incredible time watching Woman in Motion. It was a movie about Nichelle Nichols and NASA. It was incredible. Uh, there's no doubt about it. I was so excited. I mean, I had a wave of emotions during the movie, but at the end of it, I just said, this is, this is totally beautiful. This is a wonderful homage to all the work that Nichelle has done over her entire life, virtually. Um, the movie was just, it was very well put together. And it also, they also had um, commentary from George Takei and Walter Koenig, which was, I mean, that was cool. A lot of commentary. I mean, I used to be part of the Michelle Nichols fan club years ago. I remember getting her autobiography when it came out. All the Star Trek ones. They Remember in the 90s, a lot of them were producing autobiographies and you know, getting them and reading them as soon as possible. But hers, so I knew her story very well. I went into the movie not knowing exactly what to expect, and I think they did a wonderful job of balancing showing her early life, her personal and professional life as a singer, a dancer, and an actress, but then showing what she is as a person and the passion of developing this unique program for NASA of encouraging Black people, Asian people, people of different ethnicities that are Americans and women to join NASA. Yes, I did know the story. I didn't know all the details, and I thought it was wonderful how they presented it. I mean, NASA already had, you know, like there were people who applied, but they said that after after Nichelle did her, her recruiting, which was for about four years when she recruited people, I mean, they, they just had a, a huge increase in, in the number of applicants from, well, well, overall in the number of applicants, but also a lot more of, of the minorities and women because, um, and, and it was, you know, not that the minorities never could apply before, but they just never did because it just never occurred to them, like, to, to reach for something that high. Like, hey, I could, I could work for NASA. I could go up into space, you know, and so, and the world, Nichelle Nichols was the one who, encourage them she she spoke at colleges and she spoke on on tv she they said nasa actually got behind um the the campaign and they, they actually made sure she got on good morning america so that she could talk about this program and and recruiting people anybody who's seen nichelle at a convention knows the story about her and martin luther king she retells it as often as she can and most people who are into Star Trek know the story about how after the first season, she didn't feel that she was contributing enough as an actress to the show. So she wanted to leave. But he made the statement saying, you can't because it shows that black people are in the future. You're the only one on TV that shows this. And we kind of take it for granted to a degree, but those who grew up in that time, they when you watch Lost in Space, the Robinson family was all white. I mean, time tunnel, all white. And anything going to the future did not have any black people, especially black people in it. Um, you did have, obviously, Japanese science fiction shows. You did have shows produced in other countries, but you didn't see black people in it. And so just her being on the bridge of the Enterprise sent a message to the whole world that in the future, we're going to get along together. We're going to work things out, and it's just going to make us stronger. And then she, she had to take those principles and apply it to real world NASA. And and they did say that, she, that um, Uhura was the first black character on a TV series that was non-subservient, non-subservient, mm -hmm. that was a main character on a TV series. So so she had opened that door. Um, some have even dismissed Nichelle, saying, well, she's a background character. She's an officer. <laughs> if you're right, an officer yes. in the military, if you're a lieutenant, that's a position that commands respect. So her being a lieutenant was not merely a background character. She was a bridge officer. There's something to that, to that rank. 
Yes, definitely. She she played an important part. I and I I know she wasn't like she didn't get as much screen time as uh, Shatner, Nimoy, and Kelly, but she was there. She was in most episodes, you know, being mm-hmm. right there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And it was wonderful to see testaments from so many people, not just in Star Trek, like you mentioned, but Ashley Eckstein. We know her from the Star Wars universe. She inspired her. And Martin Luther King the Third w- was in this movie. Yeah. And you know, talking about his father and about how Nichelle. Well, well, and of course, the the story about how how he uh, told Nichelle not to quit the show, but also mm-hmm. a lot of stuff about how, what Nichelle did for for um, the civil rights movement. Absolutely. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yes. I mean, you you want to talk about somebody with true credibility? He had to make multiple statements about Nichelle and her contributions. DC Fontana, Star Trek yes. alumni. What I liked about this movie is that it took years to produce. So you did have people like Dorothy Fontana who passed away, but they had the recordings of her commentary in there. And and they did say that they used um, some footage from from old interviews with Nichelle. Of course, you could tell because they showed scenes of her um, at different times in her life. You can tell some some of these scenes she was older, some she was younger. Which I appreciated. Yes. Because there was a certain one that was from the 80s. And I figured I've seen just about every Star Trek interview that's ever on YouTube. I mean, when YouTube became a thing probably 10 years ago and there was Star Trek content downloaded on it or uploaded on it. I was watching everything. I was watching Tomorrow Show. I was watching anything that I could find. And I said, I don't remember this one. And they said it was unearthed. This is one of the ones that they found in this box of of 16 millimeter tapes and, and a variety of other medium that that wasn't as readily available. So yeah, things it was from, great to see that. Yeah, like from TV shows that um, that nobody watched or mm-hmm. very few people watched, or for networks, cable channels that very few people watched. Yes. So a lot of the stuff had never been seen by most people. And well, that's we found out about this because don't leave after the credits. There, it's like a Marvel movie. There are post-credit behind-the-scenes footage that tells you about the production of this and how they originally wanted to release this movie for the 50th anniversary of Star Trek. Yes. But they held back because they wanted to get more interviews. They wanted to get more information, which I'm glad that they did. Uh, they interviewed John Lewis, uh, showing the impact uh, that he felt. There were a lot of astronauts in it, Frederick too. Frederick Gregory, I mean. yes. Giving first-hand experiences. Mae Jameson. I mean, people that, that actually were recruited, recruited by Nichelle and yes. um, became astronauts and went into space. And they, you know, and they just thought they it was the greatest thing ever and they owe it to her. I love it how Fred, Frederick Gregory said, when I saw her recruitment video, she was speaking to me. Yes, he did say That's that. Wonderful. He was, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, just so many. And they gave homage to Star, uh, Star Trek creator Gene Roddenberry. There was a good amount of time spent on Nichelle talking about how special Gene was and the acknowledgments of others that Gene was a visionary. And he, he did see humanity going to space and the the planet being unified and being able to work together to to do this. Yes. And the frustrations that he had with Hollywood. There's an episode of the lieutenant that talked about racial injustice in the military and that episode wouldn't be aired. And that's what caused him to be so frustrated that he had to create a science fiction series that he could address these issues under the guise of science fiction. Yes, he, with Star Trek, he could cr- create a lot of the shows that he wanted to, yeah, address issues he wanted to address and not be censored. Now, we went with two other friends. One was a Star Trek fan, and one really wasn't a Star Trek fan. She was a NASA fan. So she was coming to the movie because she knew the NASA angle of this, not so much the Star Trek angle. And it was interesting talking to her afterwards of... She didn't realize 
all that Star Trek did <laughs> that led to real world things. The, the way Star Trek influenced so many people. Other facets about the movie that I appreciated is that they did not dodge around the Challenger tragedy. The, yeah, they actually talked about it. And N- Nichelle had created uh, or had recruited uh, the people who were on the Challenger. So that was, yeah, that that was really tragic for her, for her more than a lot of people because she, she had met them and recruited them. She even viewed everyone that she recruited as her children because she got to know them personally. She would go to space shuttle launches even after her tour. It showed how involved in NASA she was decades after her official involvement. And it just spoke to us as to what an amazing person Nichelle is. Because some actors... A good amount of them are very self-centered. I think I think Hollywood does that to you to a certain degree. But Nichelle was extremely giving of her time, of her resources, of herself. This was something she wanted to do, which, which is what she talked about too. Um, that that uh, that she needed to just go out and and do it herself because no one else was doing this. She, she was just awesome. She, she knew at this time, this is when Star Trek was becoming popular. She knew that she was someone that people would listen to. Yes. And I liked how she said she didn't want to be a puppet. She did not want a bunch of NASA people going on tour with her and telling her what to do and how to do things on the side. She needed to educate herself. So she met up with some astronauts and understood everything that she needed to understand to speak to those in NASA on their level. I mean, she's extremely intelligent, very bright. And yeah, she went through a little bit of the astronaut training just to see what it was like. Yeah. Yes. And, of course, everyone you'd think would, would want the best and the brightest. And, unfortunately, it was a system that wasn't designed to pull in the best and the brightest. They even gave the example of... So many women took the test, but they didn't make it into NASA early on, pre-Nichelle. But the reality of it is more women were passing the test than men. And that didn't surprise me. I mean, you look at Yale, you you look at universities of high caliber, women tend to be more studious than men. And so it, it made sense that Nichelle could address the issue. She could put everyone on a, a fair playing ground and then let your test results speak for themselves. And and that's one of the reasons she did this. She knew it that it that it was like that, that women are smart and that they mm-hmm. and that they can do it. Yeah, totally. And it was it was refreshing to hear so many people speak highly of Nichelle, men and women that said you know, she she did something special. A lot of people don't know of what she did, but it's it's her time to shine now. Not her time to shine as Nichelle as as Lieutenant Uhura, the actress or the character, but Nichelle Nichols as the pioneer for human rights and human equality. Thanks for listening. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and join our Facebook group. Live long, and may the force be with you. Nanu, nanu.